Hi, Vlad here, devinsideu.com. Today we're going to talk about my perspective on computer science, programming, and software development. By the way, when I say software development, I also mean application development. But first, let me tell you a story about how I chose what to study. As I mentioned in my very first video, I started programming by writing scripts for a game called Counter-Strike. But let's be honest here, that's not real programming. I usually tell people that I studied programming when I went to the university. The interesting thing is that even though I was convinced that I would like programming, I wasn't exactly sure that programming was the only thing that I would like to do for the rest of my life. So I wasn't really sure what to study. But it had to be something with computers for sure. I applied to only two universities and went to the first that replied. You will see a few more examples of impulsive decision making like this in the next minute or so. The university had a faculty called informatics and in it there were only two courses. One has been around for 30 years and was called general informatics. I'm trying to translate from German here. The other one has been around only for 15 years and was called computer networking. General informatics was presumably for hardcore programmers and since I wasn't sure if that was my thing, I chose computer networking. As you can see, I'm very quick at thinking on my feet. Funny story, I told a friend once that I always wanted to dance. One week later, he comes back and says, hey, there's a salsa course, do you wanna take it? I'm like, I don't know what salsa is, but let's do this. I danced for one and a half years and even participated in the show. It's on my other YouTube account, check it out if you care. Back to the story. So I chose computer networking, but in the very first semester, I was hooked with programming and even considered to switch. But then I realized that there were only four lectures that were different, so I stayed and took a bunch of programming-oriented lectures. In the second semester, I started to gain some knowledge from outside of the university. My sources were primarily books that were recommended by some of the professors that I really liked. After having read a few of them, I started to realize that something was wrong. Things were not adding up. The topics were related, but they seemed to have different goals, for the lack of a better word. I didn't know it back then, but it turns out that what I was studying was not programming or software development slash application development, it was computer science. Just to be clear, there was a lot of programming and software development projects involved. We even had projects with external companies and had an entire practice semester where we had to apply for an internship at a software company, preferably for a software development position. So I decided to make a video in which I would define the terms computer science or CS programming and software development or application development. And there are many reasons for a video like this and only one of them is to help you make a career decision. First of all, I wanna say that these are already relatively well-defined terms that you can look up right now. What I wanna do in this video though is to add my own twist to these definitions and even maybe redefine a few things. Because what I wanna be able to do on this YouTube channel is to say things like, this is how a programmer would solve this problem or this is something that a computer scientist would do, and I want you to know exactly what I mean. This is why I'm making this video, to have some sort of common ground. As I have mentioned in the past, our industry is still very young, and even though we've reached consensus on most of the things, there are still plenty of them that we don't exactly agree on. You're probably most curious about the difference between programming and software development, and you're lucky because programming is the simplest one to explain. So let's start with that. First, we're gonna talk about programming, and then about programmers, and then about how it all fits into software development and computer science. So first of all, the angle that we're gonna take here is a bit weird and is as follows. As someone in our industry, all of these three things, computer scientist, programmer, and software developer, are traits of your personality. By the way, just so you know, as a tech-savvy person, you're automatically in our industry. Congratulations, you made it. You're either watching my videos because you're my friend or because you're actually interested in technology. Or both. Cheers. You might be in for the money, but if this is your only motivation, trust me, the world of pain will welcome you with open arms. So come to the dark side. We have cookies. For now, let's just say that you're a tech-savvy person. So for the purposes of this discussion, and I'm gonna repeat that, for the purposes of this discussion, your personality is comprised only out of these three things. So your goal is to find the balance between them and then maybe steer the balance towards one of them if you so desire. But you still need all of them. Being 90% programmer, 5% CS, and 5% software developer makes you a relatively useless programmer. Just trust me on this. Okay, so you have these three traits, these three personalities inside of you, and they all have their own goals. Achieving these goals might require different tools, different mindsets, etc. And as we will see in a few minutes, these differences are crucial. Okay, so to me, programming is an activity where an effort is made to make a machine accomplish tasks. The machine presumably being a computer, but it doesn't have to be. I don't want to get philosophical about this, but even a calculator is a computer. You put some numbers in and the calculator accomplishes the task of computing the result. What I'm saying is that, contrary to the popular definition or belief, 
Even a user can be a programmer, at least in my definition. Think about it. If you take a tool like Google Maps and then change a few things in the setting, all of a sudden you're getting notifications about traffic in your area. Or play with a service like IFTTT. Just a few clicks and things like phone calls, tweets, and a ton of other things are getting relayed to email or telegram, etc. You tell me how this is not programming. Plenty of kids can hack some JavaScript these days and even upload apps to the Apple or Play Store. They are programmers, not necessarily because they write programs, but because they make computers do things. In one of my next videos, might even be the next one, I'm, I'm not sure yet, we're going to write an app and make it publicly accessible without writing almost any code at all, maybe a line or two tops. So as a programmer, your goal is to make the computer do what you want it to do. And that's it. Simple, isn't it? Notice that programming is just an activity or a skill. However, it's neither a field of art or science, nor is it a profession. Independently of how good you are at it, let's talk about computer science for now. First of all, let's talk about the obvious things. The term contains the word science. So your goal is to increase your universal understanding, in this case about computers. Things like what is possible to do with a computer or what will be possible to do in the future. You want to push the boundaries of understanding of what computers are and what computing is. The whole AI discussion melts the boundaries between computers, machines and human beings. Do computers have a soul? As a computer scientist, you might even build computers, so you don't even have to be on the programming side of the equation. Of course, most computer scientists have written programs. They usually run simulations and work with a lot of data, but technically, as a computer scientist, you don't have to program. You should be able to, but you don't have to. The other way around also holds. Most programmers know a thing or two about computer science. Big surprise. Fun fact. Did you know that the first programs were written even before computers existed? So as a computer scientist, your goal is to increase this universal understanding about computers. So what you do is you discover algorithms, you evaluate their complexity, discuss trade-offs, prove that there is only n ways to solve a specific problem. You even prove that certain problems are not solvable by a computer within a practical time frame. So all in all, it's about algorithms. There might be math or physics involved. You might even go to Intel or AMD and help them build microprocessors. And don't forget about quantum computing. Also, you're a scientist, which makes you a researcher. So you should know how to make publications, how to write papers, how to reference your sources correctly, how to quote other people, etc. Another thing is that whereas a programmer only cares about how to make a computer do certain things, Things. As a computer scientist, you might use code or algorithms as a communication tool. So if you as a computer scientist look at the code that another computer scientist wrote, you should be able to go, oh yeah, now I know what you were thinking. The same holds for software development, by the way. CS is closer to formal things. These are people who build compilers, even though technically CS knowledge is not required, but highly encouraged. So CS is about what is possible and programming is about how it's actually done. Let's talk about software development now. And of course, programming is part of it, or as a computer scientist would say, a subset of it. Okay, so first of all, some people argue that we should be called software developers, and others say that we should be called software engineers. I believe that you should be able to call yourself whatever you like. I don't really care about this entire discussion. You can call me engineer or developer or both, I don't really mind. Just don't call me coder or programmer, I'm not a big fan of those. Since we're already discussing this, and you started this by the way, I wouldn't say that it's not engineering. But I would also say that it's something else, something more. Some people say art or craft, and personally, I'm leaning more towards craft, and those things don't go well with engineering. So I would say that software development is a craft, but again, call yourself however you like. We can call it software development engineering, if you like. I'm gonna try to use the word developer from now on. So the goal of software is, get this, not to be hard, and this is fundamental. I mentioned it already in another video. The idea behind software is to be soft and thus easy to change. Also, as a software developer, your goal is to help your company solve problems. And more often than not, it is done by advising the stakeholders not to program and thus not to build things. But I don't wanna get deeper into that this time. So as a programmer, you might write a program that runs some simulation or to get some data and produces a report. And then once you see the final result, you're done. Or you know maybe you can tweak a thing or two and then you're done. But as a software developer, I'm sorry, 
but you're not. By my definition, you are done once you have ensured to a certain degree that the program that you have written can easily be changed, very likely by someone else, and therefore you are done once you made sure that there is enough information for your teammates to understand what your system is doing and why. At the very least, the medium for that information should be your code. Anyone who reads your code wants to understand it. It should be similar to reading an article in a blog or a magazine. They're not looking for puzzles. They don't care about how smart and skillful you are as a programmer. All they want is to understand. Ironically, they play your computer. They are your target audience. And it's easy to write code that a computer understands, but writing code that another human understands, not so much. How can this be done, you might ask? Well, it is done by following a process of some kind. Because contrary to programming, software development is a discipline. You have to follow certain practices. And by the way, our industry doesn't always agree on what the best of these practices are. But anyway, you have to have some core values, some principles, some things that you're not allowed to do, some constraints. For example, once you know what you want to build, you don't just go ahead and build it. You prototype it, you write tests, you write documentation, you make sure that all the stakeholders are up to date with what's going on. Maybe the plans change because the market changed. Who knows? You collaborate with people. Your goal is not just to write code that works. Your goal is to make sure that even if a manager looks at it, he should be able to understand at least parts of it. Of course, it depends on which level of procedural abstraction you are, but most of the time, even these are not clearly defined. Usually it's something like this. Business logic, business logic, open calendar, create appointment, boom, open socket, battery. What just happened? More often than not, even programmers don't understand code like this. It looks like some kids wrote it. And most of the time, this is exactly what happened. We all got into programming because it's fun building things. So most often our code looks like some programmers just try to build something, just try to make something work and then just left the system in this prototypical state. Programmers are not the only people to blame though. And it's not as easy as it sounds. We're confronted with a lot of economic forces. People might come to us and be like, hey, this thing is burning or that thing needs to be fixed yesterday. In situations like this, it's hard to follow the process. My YouTube channel is mostly about software development, which is why I'm concentrating on it so much right now. It also might sound like I'm judging programmers, but I'm not. I'm just getting a bit emotional because this topic deeply matters to me. I believe a lot of problems in our industry would be solved if people would understand that there is a difference between programming and software development and also what this difference is. Notice that there are no job descriptions for programmers. Everybody's looking for software developers and it's assumed to be the same thing. It is also assumed that a degree in computer science makes you eligible for a software development position, but I would argue that it shouldn't be so easy. By the way, this is also the reason why I believe that you have a huge chance to find a job in our industry without a degree. Most places actually understand that IT degrees are CS degrees, which are helpful but are not a requirement. I personally know people who came from completely different professions. They taught themselves programming and joined the ranks. No CS degree. This is also why boot camps are getting so much traction these days. They teach you how to be a software developer. They don't just teach you CS or programming. Hopefully. I've never been to one. One last point that I would like to open for discussion before I leave. Because software development is a discipline, it is safe to assume that a certain degree of professionalism is required and being paid is not how I define a professional. To me, being a professional means being accountable for your work. And if you can't be held accountable for not following your discipline, then in my opinion, you can't call yourself a developer. Notice that, again, I'm not judging, but also notice that as a programmer, this has never been your goal. All you wanted was to build things. This happens so many times that you look at some code and you just can't understand it. It's horrible. And then you find out who did it. And then you approach this person and ask him, hey, how could you have written something like this? What were you thinking? And then he looks at you like you're from a different planet and says, what do you mean? It works. And it's hard to have a discussion like this because if this was his only goal, then how can I convince him that he's not done? So to summarize, if CS is the what, and programming is the how, then I would go out on a limb and say that software development is the why. I know this video was freakishly long, but if you made it this far, I'm really hoping that now you understand better what to expect as a software developer, but more importantly, what is expected of you. It's Vlad, let me know in the comments below what you think about all of this, and remember, these are only my definitions. Don't forget to subscribe and stay safe.